extraordinary things would be if we could find a cure, a real fix for rheumatoid arthritis rather than these just um, generally very unsatisfactory symptomatic remedies and um, quite um, aggressive treatments which don't really fundamentally alter the process which is, tends to be progressive. There are many, many autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid is only one, where the body's own white cells have mistakenly started to regard part of your own body as foreign and to attack it and destroy it, which is most unfortunate if it's your joints. But it's not just that, you see, there are many other illnesses like this. Elements of asthma can be related to autoimmune, you've got Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, there are many, many diseases that have an autoimmune component to them. We think that multiple, multiple cirrhosis could have an autoimmune component, uh, and so on. Now what would be fascinating would be if we could find some approach to autoimmune diseases, which could deal with many of them using the same technique. Could it be possible? Well, yes. You see, in the body, there are vast numbers of white cells, each of which is designed to react to a particular antigen, that's a particular foreign protein. Each of those white cells is specific to that particular antigen and will ignore everything else. And what's fascinating is that when you and I were in the womb, our body was mapped out. Every single surface of every single one of our cells was mapped out by our immune system, which just explored it all and said, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. And once we were born, anything which enters our body or is discovered by our immune system that does not fit that library of life will then be attacked and destroyed. Now what would be very interesting would be to see if we could selectively um, target particular kinds of white cells that have mistakenly overreacted against, say, um, uh, ligaments or overreacted against, say, bits of, of brain or overreacted say against bits of bowel. Could it be done? Yes it could. You see these cells because they only react to those particular antigens, those particular stimulants, are unique. They can therefore in theory be isolated and destroyed. In theory we could target the entire immune system looking for these specific cells because, after all, these cells are designed to get very angry in response to a particular antigen. So if we could introduce that particular antigen in a way which would poison and destroy those cells, then we would have a very neat trick, which would leave the rest of the immune system entirely intact, but would, uh, uh, to, uh, recognizing all things uh, that are you as you, and all other germs and, and antigens coming in as foreign stuff, but at least accepting the joints are normal, that your brain is normal, and so on. Now, although we're quite a long way away from a practical approach, it is not beyond the realms of possibility to think that as our knowledge of immunology accelerates, that we could find a way to tackle this within the next 10, 15, or 20 years. And if we do, the prize will be extraordinarily high. But one particular challenge is this. You see, most of the investment into these kinds of things comes from pharmaceutical companies who are looking to develop a product which can be formulated as a drug and given as a tablet ideally or in worst case as an injection or some kind of spray uh, but in this particular instance it's unlikely we get one you see it's unlikely that if we did find this process worked it would be a technique it would be something that would be done in the laboratory or you'd um, um, plug in someone's blood supply to a particular machine uh, and pass the blood through particular filters which would uh, look to identify these particular cells and clean them out. Um, it could be some variant of these kinds of things. So it's something that a clinic could charge for. Uh, uh, someone who's got the machinery might sell some machines and make some money. Uh, someone might make some money by holding conferences training doctors to do these things. But really it's not going to be a pharmaceutical blockbuster. And that perhaps explains why progress in this area has been quite slow today. You see, if that you compare that to um, a, a drug which uh, rheumatoid sufferers have to take morning, noon and night, uh, which is um, uh, going to be taken until the day they die, for maybe 25 to 30 years, <laughs> that's an awful lot of product. That's a true blockbuster. And if it was to reduce the, uh, the, uh, the, the rate of acceleration of uh, 
of, of rheumatoid by let's say 40 percent well you'd be dealing with a drug that's probably got a value of uh, oh could easily be three four billion dollars a year maybe a lot more because people will pay a lot of money for something like that and there'll be huge pressure on insurance companies and to governments to pay for it because disability is itself very very expensive in the community so that's where we'll see the money going unfortunately for the moment but the most exciting technologies although they may still be quite elusive will be with us one day